I was quite surprised. And she was off a bit before I was ready, but anyway, gear up, climbing away. Looking good. G'day, Phil from PhilTech here. It's been a while since we've done an update on the production situation on the engine. One thing we've uh, completed to a production status is mounting the electronic management system to uh, the back of our engine. I'm just wanting to just recap the aspect of how we fit the V12 engine to the plane and the modifications because there's been a bit of a change that is to bring us up to the current production version. So if we look at our one fifth scale here, we will notice that it's a very long cowling. Normally your firewall would be potentially here, but of course we've had to put a new firewall further back to be able to fit our scale length of our engine. Also, that might be the overall template of the firewall, but you're gonna to have to cut out a square or rectangle closer to that. And you'll have a template to know how to do that. So let's have a closer look at that now. We've mounted the engine onto a separate timber firewall so that we can show you what's going on under the cowling as well as inside the fuselage. And the first thing we notice is that there's now this fiberglass back plane that seals the whole engine system from the inside of the fuselage. So all hoses, fuel, water, all electrical cables are terminated on this back plane so that you don't get any potential leakage into the fuselage. And you can notice here too, for instance, these cables going to the glow plugs are sealed up by a special custom made gland here. Let's take a look at the what's inside the fuselage. This plastic box at the top houses the electronic management system. The silicon tube connects the pressure sensor inside this box to the fuel rail so that the system can control the fuel pressure via the speed of the fuel pump. These indicator lamps relate to the operation of the pumps. Below are the pre-mounted servos that control mixture and throttle. These have been set up and adjusted to operate with correct throw for your RC gear. This will make installation into your aircraft a lot easier. At the bottom here is the barb connection for the fuel tank line. Here we are looking at the rear of the electronic box. We've got a connection socket here so that we can plug in this little miniature control panel. This control panel could be mounted, for instance, on the inside of your cockpit, or maybe you can find some other place on the fuselage to hide it. When the battery is plugged in and the switch is turned off, the three lamps light in succession to show that they are operational and the battery is connected. The electronic system is now in the standby condition and draws very little current and can remain in this condition for lengthy periods. In other words, the battery can be connected in the hangar well before proceeding to the airstrip. When the switch is turned on, the system moves through a checklist, which includes condition of the glow plugs, checking fuel pump pressure, and coolant pump operation. If all are found to be okay, the green light comes on, which indicates you are ready to start cranking the engine. So what does the installer need to do to connect this engine to make it running? Firstly, they can need to connect the power cable here to their 7.4 volt LiPo battery. They've got a connection here to their RC receiver for the engine cutout switch. They've got the two servo leads that need to connect the throttle and mixture controls. And as we mentioned earlier, you've got your control panel 
that needs to be plugged in there. We've got two hoses that go to the radiator, the one here and the one down here, and they're clearly labelled on the back plane as to what the connection is. And finally over here we've got the where you connect the hose from your fuel tank. This cable, which will need to be mounted to the side of the fuselage, is then temporarily plugged into the lead from the starter battery box while cranking the engine over. The aim of all these upgrades to the engine design is to make installation as simple as possible and to be able to provide a product with as many components fully fitted and tested. And remembering, of course, having those servos pre-fitted and pre-set up should make your life a lot easier when it comes to installing this motor. If you've got any questions about the what we've talked about, please put it in the comments. Uh, otherwise, thank you for watching. Remember to like and subscribe and Keep on having fun with your model aeroplane.